Hi, this is your Sapil Bhartia and we are here at KubeCon and CloudEditCon in London. And today we have with us Brian Douglas, Director of Ecosystem at the Linux Foundation. Brian, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, first of all, I would love to know about this position, Director of Ecosystem. My role is Head of Ecosystem at the CNCF, specifically in the Linux Foundation. And I work with end users. So end users are folks who leverage the cloud uh, for the technology businesses. Uh, so these are not technically vendors. Vendors are kind of obvious, like a Google or, or a Microsoft. Uh, but these are folks like Intuit or uh, NatWest Bank. Uh, we've also got Bloomberg as well as end users and we'll help them to engage in cloud. And the benefit of that is that they have their own way of doing cloud native. Uh, they share in a non-competitive way on how to do it. Which means you also have a very good pulse of how folks are using Kubernetes. First of all, Correct. I'm not even going to ask a question, who is using it because almost... Everybody, yeah. Linux kernel or, you know, Kubernetes. Uh, talk a bit about um, when you talk to these, you know, customers and users, because everybody's use case is a bit different, right? Yeah. So talk a bit about how people are using it and what benefit that they see, that's why they're using it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times companies start smaller. Um, a lot of earlier companies will have different processes for different engineering teams. Uh, so we have the... We have SREs, but then we have platform engineering. So now you can standardize on how you, how you interact with the cloud. Uh, so for example, Bloomberg uh, recently was on a panel with me talking about how they standardize their practices around platform engineering within an organization. Uh, so it's no longer, I build this way, we deploy that way. It's now us as an organization. This is how we interact with the cloud. You just share one, you know, Bloomberg. But yeah. just, just talk a bit about, you know, what are the trends patterns you're seeing? Because yeah. we cannot go every use case, but what pattern you're seeing, what benefit people are seeing, that's why they use Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah, correct. So the, the patterns we're seeing is that they're able to scale, do, do more with less, essentially. I know it's hard to find really talented engineers, uh, and it's hard to find folks who are standardized on the, the, the technologies like Kubernetes uh, and all the other cloud native products. Uh, so what we're seeing now is a trend of now everyone can go to a KubeCon like this and Folks, we don't advocate everyone to go find your new job, but there is recruiting that happens here. Uh, so that way you know what you're getting when you have folks coming through uh, because we have now we have training through LF Education and the CNCF Coop Shirts as well. Uh, so you can have an expectation of like, if your platform is built this way, you can bring on new engineers to be ready uh, to work within your system on day one. And as folks start embracing you know, Kubernetes, Kubernetes is also not something easy, you know? We all yeah. agree on that. It's complicated. It's complicated costly also as they start working from small and i'm not talking about folks like bloomberg you know, yeah they have all the resources as they go in this journey do they also share the lessons they had they learn which can benefit others yeah correct so that that's what i run the end user program so we have a t technical advisory board we've got a technical um oversight committee as well as well as the governing board for the cncf uh, and these are ways for us to engage with these end users to share their case studies uh, so the idea on CNCF's website, we have case studies where folks can talk about their journey and uh, expanding their cloud native ecosystem, but also just being ready to for what the next wave is, which uh, we get into it, it's AI. I talk to a lot of folks and uptime becomes, you know, especially when you look at interconnected, you know, especially yeah. the whole cloud native systems there. Uh, tools are there, processes are there, yeah, and whole culture is there. Yeah. So when it comes to uptime, what is strategy they do they deploy to ensure uptime? Yeah, I mean the uptime right now is like ninety nine point nine percent is standard. Like you don't expect anything less than that. Like the time that you're out or your your server goes down, you're losing money for the business. And a lot of these end users, their business is not worrying about the cloud. So it is real standardized around open telemetry, which is a great uh, offshoot inside the CFCF of how you get telemetry within your servers. Uh, so if you see something happen, everyone knows the next step in the playbook uh, to go mitigate their risk. Uh, so now we have perfect standards and a lot of the sponsors here at KubeCon uh, provide really good tools outside the box. But the real, the best thing about this is open telemetry. The standard is open source. So ma no matter what vendor you're using or what tool you're using in-house, in uh, that standard is established. Uh, so expectations around downtime uh, is, is clear and cut and dry. The, the flip side of uptime is downtime, right? Yeah. And downtime, there's so many causes, you know, something goes wrong. What kind of incident response strategies uh, organizations are embracing to keep the, you know, downtime low and uptime high? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's all about communication. So now we, uh, we don't have pagers anymore. Like back in the day, we had pagers back like, as soon as like 10 years ago, we had pagers. Now we have pager duty, which is a sponsor of KubeCon. Uh, the idea there is that 
it's all about communication. So uh, there are playbooks on what to do next and what run books to run when you have to mitigate risk. Uh, so being able to have multi-cluster environments to be able to spin up an environment, spin down environments, very, very popular topic here at KubeCon. Uh, so the idea of having your data sovereign within those clusters uh, helps you mitigate those risks. So when you have, unfortunately, downtime happens, but you can now be in a position where you don't even have to notice it. Your, your end users don't, your customers don't have to notice when your, your stuff goes down. And if you look at the, the whole, you know, we talked about you know, uptime, we talked about downtime, challenge, because do you also hear from customer where you're like, this is still missing in the stack? And if yes, what is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, the funny thing is like the, the stack continues to evolve. Like now we're really, really hammering down on like what DPU usage is. And uh, things that are missing is around utilization. I, I saw a metric uh, in, a, in a paper around 5% utilization of all accessible GPUs. And I think we're actually, specifically, we're preparing for the next wave of AI and how we integrate AI and within our, our, our companies. Uh, so we're preemptively hoarding GPUs uh, but there's an opportunity for us to now mitigate that risk uh, so we can spin up stuff and spin stuff down um, preemptively. Uh, so we're not spinning servers and spending all that money for no reason. So there's a lot of uh, cost controls around uh, GPU usage that is going to be coming out in the, in the next couple of months. I, I, I believe, uh, no one's really hinted on that for me specifically, but I just see that's where the industry is going. And since you have thrown the AI hand in it here, so I do have to yes. ask, you know, what are the emerging tools, frameworks, technologies that, you know, people are either dipping their toes in or they are like mature enough, like Kubernetes, that they are using in production? Yeah, I, I encourage everyone to check out sandbox projects within the um, sandbox projects within the CNCF. Uh, there's one that's a uh, KHTBT, which is a good understanding of um, uh, your server in architecture infrastructure. So as you're trying to mitigate risk and you're asking questions about the, the, the knowledge of your server uh, setup, uh, that's something actually coming up pretty soon. Um, currently Sandbox, so open to contributions from anybody in the ecosystem. Uh, we definitely need more case studies and stories around people who are now working in this, this problem set. We have a good vendor ecosystem here. Yeah. But what kind of uh, resources which are available for users so not only they can share their stories, but they can also learn from others' stories. And what role is CNCF, Linux Monitor playing in enabling that? Yeah, yeah. First of all, to say that resources, LF training, uh, we've got a really good program around leveling yourself with the Kubernetes. Uh, but the other thing I'll mention is we have reference architectures uh, that we got one from Art Adobe recently. Uh, so folks sharing how they're building uh, their infrastructure uh, and their cloud native environments. Uh, the other thing is case studies. If anybody's got a story around how they build in cloud native, uh, open ears. Like we want to share those stories publicly at the next KubeCon. Uh, so would love folks to find me and, and share those stories. We are here. I've been covering it for a And the pace of innovation as a journalist is too, it's very hard for me to keep up with that. Think about those practitioners who have yeah. to actually use. So how are organizations keeping up with this pace of innovation? Because first of all, they have to keep dipping their toes. They don't yeah. want to be left out. Yeah. But then we don't have technical expertise. So how do they cope up with that? And then how is CNCF Linux Foundation helping with that? Yeah, yeah. So the way we help it is really through, one, I mentioned training a couple of times, but membership is an, another opportunity. So we have like the, um, we have memberships through like silver and, uh, and gold tier and platinum. But we also have like a, a bottom tier membership through the, um, supporter network. Uh, this is an opportunity for folks to, if you're just getting started, you want to keep up to date, you want to be on our newsletter, our mailing list, like this is an opportunity for you now to stay in touch. Um, so that way, when it comes opportunity of someone to share their case study or sort of story before it's even ready, uh, we have standing meetings with the TOC on a bi-weekly basis, uh, public and private ones. Uh, public is when anybody can come through and find out what's happening within the ecosystem. Uh, you have to be a member to be part of the private ones. Uh, and that's a, our encouragement to, to join and get some extra information on what's happening in the industry. So like we mentioned AI, like that's very fast moving, fast pace. Uh, it's very hard to keep up. Uh, but if you can now chat with another end user in a non-competitive fashion to say, hey, this is what we're thinking about, looking for other reference architecture and use cases on how we can solve these problems internally for us, it's an open forum for folks to collaborate and have those conversations. I do remember the early days, security used to be someone else's problem, but with yeah. cloud, cloud native, even in the cloud native space, then you folks start to have security days and the ecosystem is there. Um, how are folks looking at security in the cloud native ecosystem? Yeah, it's a good question. Security is top of mind. Like we've had a lot of 
Well, actually, we don't really have a lot of incidents that are as public. Uh, we do get CVEs that are mitigated. So again, being a part of a newsletter, being part of the uh, community, you can be up to speed around when things happen. Uh, for like big incidents, uh, community really comes together and supports each other. Like it's not uh, a competitive environment where we're all keeping the, the sort of ideas to ourselves, especially when it comes to security. So uh, the idea is really just being active participant uh, and consuming the information that's out there, but also uh, when you see something, say something. That's the beauty of open source. Like one of the most secure platforms in the entire world when it comes to technology is open source. Uh, because if my company and your company are both using the same technology and I find something and I go share it within like an open C C uh, CVE or an issue, uh, that's an opportunity for you to catch up as fast, fast as possible. So it uh, really comes down to just like paying attention, being involved in community, showing up to events like this, um, coming to the keynotes. Uh, tomorrow's keynote is going to be exceptional when it comes to talking about how folks are using cloud native in the wild. Uh, and that's that's everyone's opportunity to catch up. Bram, thank you so much for joining me today and of course share the trends in the user space. We talk about vendors, but we don't talk about users. So thanks for sharing all those, you know, trends, patterns, mistakes, lessons learned. Uh, and, you know, that's how the whole, it also helps the vendor ecosystem as well. Thanks for sharing all those insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Yeah, my pleasure.